So you've enrolled in an economics class and you're trying to figure out what exactly is economics. Well, economics is a social science. It's a science where we're trying to explain what humans do and why they do it. Ultimately, economics is the study of choices that people make. And the reasons that people have to make choices is because there is scarcity in our environment, in our economy, and in the world that we live in. What is scarcity? Well, scarcity is when we have a limited amount of things that we can consume or produce. And we have scarcity because the resources we use to produce goods and services are limited. We can't just produce as much of everything as we want. So we have to choose between different things to be produced and different ways to produce them. What types of things do we have scarcity in that create trade-offs between different choices we might want to make? We have limited amounts of time. We have limited amounts of land. And in any given year, you have a, might have a limited income. And so you have to make a choice between buying one good or a service and another good or a service. And that's, those are the types of choices that we're going to look at as economists. And we're going to try to explain how people make those choices and how those choices interact among different people. Ultimately, we want to look at how much of a good or a service we produce and how we produce it. And the choices we have to make is because the factors of production are limited. The factors of production are the resources that we use to produce goods and services. Right? These are production inputs and or resources. Right? We have natural resources are used to produce goods and services, and natural resources are limited. We have labor which is the human effort, both physical and mental effort, that's put into producing output. If physical capital, or stock of equipment, machines, structures, and infrastructure. We'll talk a lot about what this physical capital is when we look at the production process. And human capital, which is the knowledge and skills that you as, as workers and you as humans are acquiring through learning how to do things and learning different subjects and learning different ways of thinking. And finally, we have entrepreneurship, which is the effort used to try to coordinate these factors of production and put them together in an efficient and, and useful way. So these are the factors of production that are used to produce goods and services. Since they are not unlimited, and since they are limited, we have to choose between using different factors of production, and we have to choose between different things to produce. We're going to try, as economists, to answer lots of questions. This is one of the big skills that economists learn how to do, is how to answer questions. And we answer two different types of questions. We can look at positive analysis, which answers the questions like what is or what will be. An example of that would be, how does a college education affect a person's productivity and earnings? I think that's how does college education affect something? That's a positive question. A normative question or normative analysis is what ought to be, right? what should you be doing? So a normative question on that top topic might be, should the government subsidize a college education? Positive analysis and positive questions are much more objective. What will happen? What is the effect of this on that? Normative questions are much more, what should we do or what ought we do? And those are where we might have differences of opinion based on values. Positive questions are much more objective and easier and more straightforward to answer. So there are three key economic questions that any society or any economy has to answer. And again, this is because we have scarcity and limited resources. We need to decide what to produce. What products should we produce? Should we produce books or should we produce cars or any other goods and services that we produce. So what should we produce them? How should we produce these products? Should we use lots of labor? Should we use lots of capital? So, so we choose how to produce goods and services. And then finally, once we've decided what to produce and how to produce them, we have to decide who gets to consume those products. This becomes all these questions become very important for any society to answer, and there are different ways of answering those questions. And we'll look at the different ways of answering them in an economy as we move forward. Now, what economists tend to do is try to answer those questions and try to explain how the world works and how economies work by using economic models. Economic models are a way that economists simplify how the world works. 
and a simplified representation of an economic environment. We often are going to look at graphs, and so we're going to be very adept at using graphs to explain things. But when we look at an economic model, what we're trying to do is take a very complicated world and simplify it down so we can answer those positive and normative questions that are posed for economists. Economics is a very powerful discipline. We're trying to make use of these simplified representations or these economic models to try to explain how humans interact and how humans make choices. We've made a very good choice in, in looking at economics as a, a discipline.